Good morning. It's a, it's a real pleasure uh, for me to, to welcome all of you to the Global Leaders in Genomic Medicine uh, meeting 2014. Uh, it's great to see everybody here uh, despite uh, the uh, polar vortex, which I think uh, caused uh, both chill and fear among many. Uh, but all of you uh, have really um, uh, made great journeys to be here from various parts of the globe, and we're very grateful. Um, as I've talked to many of you, uh, the word that comes to mind about this meeting, um, for me at least, is passion. Um, we're united, united globally uh, by a passion to see how genomic information might inform us about the biology of disease as well as uh, a passion to think about how the potential of the genome to optimize the quality of healthcare delivery around the globe. Um, secondly, I think the word that comes to mind is vision. Uh, again, as I've talked to uh, many of you, um, each, each of us, I think, has a vision for uh, having uh, genome-wide information as an integral part of uh, both science and healthcare delivery, and we have a vision and a roadmap and a pathway to, to take us there. And that's what I think we will be uh, seeing t over the next two days is a number of different uh, visions and roadmaps and pathways to uh, bring genome information into, into uh, healthcare delivery. Some of you have suggested that this would be a land landmark meeting. Um, I would say it might be. I think the default is that we have some great conversations. We learn through rich discussions, what's going on around us globally, um, and that would not necessarily be a bad thing. But I think um, if we can end the two days that we spend together with um, a notion of how we might change and optimize the trajectory of genomic medicine uh, in even some small and meaningful way, then in one, two, three, or five years, we might look back <coughs> and say, this was a, a landmark meeting uh, for the field. So I think it's up to us. Um, so, t 10 years ago, <laughs> as everybody knows, um, uh, Francis Collins and, and colleagues announced the completion of the first sequencing of the human genome. Um, uh, and I think uh, it was him that actually uh, got us here in part by encouraging the global community to actually participate in uh, finding the way that genomics and genomic uh, studies could, could make its way in, into medicine. And, Arguably, that journey began well before uh, 2003, and we are still on that journey. But the past 10 years, as everybody, I think, in this room knows, has seen some remarkable accomplishments that um, bring genomics into medical practice. Uh, you're going to hear, undoubtedly, about a number of opportunities to sequence genomes uh, for diagnosis uh, and even for therapeutic selection, uh, the emergence of uh, novel risk assessment tools and uh, the integration of, uh, of, of these tools into electronic medical records, uh, making risk assessments for common chronic diseases um, combined with genomic information a, a much more powerful way to understand which populations uh, need preventative care and further um, uh, treatment. Uh, the cancer, geno cancer genomes have given us insights not into, only into the biology of disease, but uh, ways to better prognosticate uh, and select therapies. Uh, pharmacogenomics, uh, both in cancer as well as the use of uh, germline uh, sequence information and genotypes to select drugs, uh, and the emergence of a series of targeted therapies, the likes of which uh, were never uh, possible prior to uh, the use of uh, genomic information. Uh, the United States FDA uh, boasts approximately 120 drug labels with gen genomic information to guide the use of those drugs. Um, Ten years ago, that number was probably around four or five. Uh, but the challenge is, I think, and we recognize that these are, this information is really, if anything, seldom used. And the question is, how do we actually encourage and, um, and uh, the adoption of uh, these, this type of information to day-to-day -day clinical practice? Uh, some of us were involved in a meeting uh, here in the U.S. Uh, a couple of years ago, which was a, a similar meeting of, of centers and institutes involved in genomic medicine across the, uh, the United States to begin to understand some of the challenges and barriers, and this publication uh, earlier this year highlighted those, um, but I think it reflects the kinds of discussions we, we hope to have over the next two days about developing evidence that 
shows the value and benefit of genetic and genomic information in the care of, of patients, the engagement of the uh, institutional leaders, um, of which you are a major part, um, but also other institutional leaders and physician leaders across the globe in uh, understanding and beginning to um, be disciples of this, uh, uh, this information, educational initiatives, and with the proliferation of electronic medical records, the, the challenges of how to fully integrate genetic information and provide information to provide, give information to providers in a just-in-time um, uh, uh, format that allows them to make um, a robust clinical decisions. And uh, perhaps most importantly is to create a viable financial model that doesn't simply add costs and new technologies to the things that we're already doing, but can take away costs and remo remove waste from the system. So we're here uh, today um, with uh, 25 nations represented. About 50 of you have traveled extremely long distances to be here. And again, as I said, we're grateful and honored uh, that you could be here. Uh, it's also clear from this map that we have some unrepresented regions of the globe. Um, that wasn't necessarily by design. Uh, and we knew uh, coming into this that uh, we would not be able to reach out to all of the pockets of expertise of, um, of, of genomic medicine around the globe, but we hope if there is to be any future meetings coming out of this, uh, that we would have, um, uh, that this would become a magnet for others uh, to, bring, uh, to bring together uh, those nations and, and areas of the, of the globe that are not appropriately represented. Uh, many of you filled out a questionnaire um, that we uh, put to you, uh, some questions about what's the state of the art in your particular organization or, or nation or region of the globe. And this is a, a non, uh, not a somewhat semi-quantitative view of some of your responses. Um, what you see on the left-hand side are a number of uh, initiatives or platforms that we asked uh, whether they were uh, currently being used in, in the clinic in, uh, uh, as far as genomic uh, medicine is concerned. And today, uh, uh, you, as you can see, uh, there are a number of sequencing te technologies that appear to be present in 50 to percent to two-thirds of, of your um, organizations in specialized centers. There are also a number of technologies, particularly these platform technologies, that are uh, hardly used at all in, uh, in half to two-thirds of your organizations. But we also asked you, where do you want to be uh, three to five years from now? And as you can see, there's sort of a right shift in this, uh, in, in this data, suggesting that not only will there be a proliferation of sequencing and other technologies in specialized centers in, in your nations for the most part, um, but clearly widely available, an interpretation might be in, um, in uh, less specialized centers and community-based practices, perhaps um, uh, pharmacogenomics, as well as uh, family history, genetic counseling, electronic medical records, and clinical decision support. So I think that's a terrific um, aspiration. The question is, how, how do we get there? And, um, and that, I think, is one of the things that we want to uh, spend some of our time uh, thinking about in the next two days. We also asked you what you perceive as the, uh, most, uh, the greatest challenges uh, um, in your particular organization or region of the world. And not, not surprisingly, as we found even in, the, in our United States uh, <clears throat> um, meetings on this topic, uh, that uh, evidence, evidence uh, is, is, is critically important for um, uh, mobilizing uh, genomics in, into medicine, uh, reimbursement uh, uh, frameworks that, um, that allow for these technologies to be used uh, and paid for, bioinformatics uh, and the creation of an electronic medical record structure, access to point of care information and education that enables clinical decision making and clinical decision support. Uh, and many of you also asked, uh, um, where should we uh, be investing? So um, as we thought about this meeting, uh, our organizing committee thought about this meeting, we, we felt that there were several outcomes that, that, that could uh, take place. One might be to some sort of international body or steering committee that could begin to uh, think about a more collective agenda that is enabling for genomic medicine implementation. Um, there also was the possibility that if we had specific um, ideas to implement that we might uh, um, charge some working groups, uh, again, global globally populated working groups to think about what the implementation agenda should be. Um, certainly we, we hope that there will be opportunities for international collaboration and maybe some 
pilot projects to expand on what we're going to hear over the next two days. And we certainly would welcome your input about other, I other ideas and ac activities and actions that could come from, from this meeting. Um, our agenda is packed, um, and we're going to do our best to stay on time. Uh, you all have copies of this. I'm not going to go through it in, in, in great detail, but we, at we attempted to hear um, from many of our international colleagues what was happening uh, in their institutions and organizations uh, in terms of genomic medicine implementation. We also want to share with you some of <coughs> those activities that are taking place within the United States. Uh, this afternoon we'll have a panel discussion. Uh, we hope to uh, have six or so uh, global leaders in genomic medicine really have a discussion with us about uh, ideas for implementation uh, on a broader scale. And tomorrow we'll have some breakout groups that reflect really your requests uh, for prioritization of some, um, of some of the challenges. So we're hoping that action-oriented outputs will come out of those breakout groups that will lead to uh, things that we can do collectively uh, after this meeting is done. Um, this, these were the meeting objectives that we uh, put in uh, the invitation letters uh, to you. I think uh, they're, um, they're quite obvious. Uh, I'm not going to go through them, but I, I do think um, we should be um, uh, benchmarking our uh, activities coming out of this meeting with the objectives that we set forth. I thought um, this would be a good time uh, for us to introduce ourselves. I, I know this uh, is going to take a couple of minutes. Terry uh, has been, already been warning me about my time. But I, I would just like each of, each of us to just uh, maybe stand up, um, say your name uh, and your organization, and just let's just go around the room. It'll take a couple of minutes, but I think it's important. I'm Satoru Miyano uh, from Human Genome Center of the University of Tokyo, Japan. Uh, I'm Victor Zhao from Duke University. I'm Andre Sirota, chairman of INSER, the French National Institute for Medical Research and Health. Okay, hello, I'm the director of the Institute of Genomics and Bioinformatics of the INSER, the National Islands for Health and Health Science. Eric Gadel, I'm the chairman of the Institute here in the United States. Frank Lott from the National Research Fund in the United States. Woody Banning, Director of the Maximum uh, Center of Social and Spine Medicine. Good morning, I'm Jeff Lopez from the Center of <coughs> Genetics in Belgium, and I'm the coordinator of Eurogenics. Uh, hi, I'm Mark Abramowitz, I'm the Director of Medical Genetics in Brussels University. Thank you. 
John Long from the National University of Singapore and the National University Health System. Uh, I co chair the Stratified Medicine Program Office of uh, the Bell Medical Research Council in Singapore. Good morning, I'm Harlan the Tucker Party from the Johns Hopkins School of Public Health. I'm Bruce Korf, University of Alabama at Birmingham. Morning, Reed Puritz, uh, University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. Hi, Jim from Harvard Medical School and Partners Healthcare. Good morning, Paul Lasko from the Canadian Institutes of Health Research. David Ledbetter, Geisinger Health System. I am Stephen Kimmel from the University of Pennsylvania. I'm Sina, Advisor, Department of Biotechnology, India and responsible for infectious diseases and biomedical genomics institute in Kalyani. Kevin Moses, <coughs> Science Funding Rotten Trust from England. Michael Zahn, also from Rotten Trust. Hello, Kevin Young from Geno, Canada. Howard McLeod from Market Institute. Hi, I'm Daniel Renner from Israel. Many different tests, some of them. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Alan Schulner from the University of Maryland in Baltimore. Urban Bodinger from the Icon School of Medicine in Mount Sinai in New York. Good morning, I'm Sarah Michi from the University of Medicine. Catherine Otis from the National Human Genome Research Institute. I'm Shane Clark from the National Human Genome Research Institute. Uh, I just arrived uh, <laughs> <laughs> by the middle of Kukui. Welcome. Thank you. That was great. Uh, so, uh, speaking of thank yous, uh, this this is a complex meeting, as I'm sure you you can uh, imagine. And I I just wanted to highlight uh, the people, uh, both from Duke University, uh, NHGRI, and the Institute of Medicine, uh, that have made this meeting possible. In particular, Reader Chambers, uh, who's worked with me uh, and Terry Manolio to uh, to um, to bring together, I think, a series of complex logistical uh, issues to, to make this meeting happen. Uh, before um, we move on to the uh, with the agenda, I just wanted to also do uh, some, I guess, housekeeping um, items. I wanted to remind everybody that this is this meeting is being uh, video cast live, uh, thanks to the team in the back, um, which means uh, that um, <clears throat> that the people uh, uh, that are that are watching this, uh, you know, need to hear your remarks. So there are microphones that I would encourage you to use um, uh, if you have a comment to make or a question to ask. And if uh, if the microphone is not accessible, whoever is receiving the question should repeat the question so those uh, on the web could uh, could un could know what, uh, what what's being asked. Um, we're going to try to be on time. Uh, Terry has volunteered to monitor our speakers and give them. Yeah, uh, and this this device will also encourage us to to remain on time with our with our remarks. Uh, there's a coat room uh, out across the Great Hall and to the right, so for those of you that need to park your coats or bags, there's uh, that facility there, and there are restrooms also out this door and to the right down the hall just before you get to the, to the stairs. Um, I also want to know, uh, know that there were some mistakes in the booklet. Some of you have pointed out to me. I apologize uh, that we weren't able to get all the most accurate information at the time of printing, but uh, if you give us the, uh, and Rita Orteji the uh, corrected information, we'll make sure that the electronic version that we distribute after the meeting uh, has all the corrected information. With that, it's, um, it's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, uh, Dr. Francis Collins, um, who, as you know, uh, was the, the leader for the completion of the Human uh, Genome Project. At that time, he was the director of the National Human Genome Research Institute. He's now the director of uh, the National Institutes of Health. And as this slide indicates, he's, um, he's a risk taker. Uh, he's, a, uh, <laughs> he's, a <laughs> he's an awardee and an advisor uh, to President Obama. And of course, everybody knows that he's a rock star, Francis. <laughs> 